I've been surrounding myself with people who are really supportive. But that's not to say that I don't meet people regularly who think what I do is nuts. I totally get why people hear what I do for a living and they're like, what? Like, that's how you make money? Just because it didn't go the way we planned doesn't mean it didn't go how it was meant to. There was a time in my life when I was a strict vegetarian, so vegan. Uh, I didn't eat any animal products at all. I w lived and worked in San Francisco in a high rise in the financial district doing a desk job, copy editing, and it was just uh, kind of one of those things where you take stock of your life and realize that this isn't how I want to spend the rest of it. Sure enough. felt the strong desire to be out in nature more. I started to grow like a garden and I lived in a tiny apartment. So it was just a little fire escape garden that probably broke some kind of municipal code. But it was so cool to like just grow even like a little bit of salad greens or something or herbs. And the more interested I got in food and growing it and being responsible for it myself, I decided to do something kind of crazy. <laughs> and I quit my job and started traveling all over the Southwest, learning how to be a farmer. So I went from farm to farm, learning with the families who ran them, and I decided that I wanted to start my own farm, and that was the thing I really felt passionate about doing. And so I moved to Oregon, rented some farmland, and tried to manage my own farm. I had kind of gotten an introduction to the fact that animal products can be purchased or obtained in a way that still respects and is humane to the animal. I started to kind of open my mind up a little bit to maybe incorporating animal products. Things mostly went really well. Like I was selling things, I was going to farmers markets and selling off farm. I really wanted to raise animals and make money doing that, but we never broke even. It was just kind of one of those things where it was like, how much money am I gonna lose before I kind of accept the writing on the wall? But meanwhile, I had been interested in skull cleaning for years. You know, I was kind of doing it in like the back area of the farm I was working on. And I was just kind of cleaning skulls that I found or from the animals I harvested and like occasionally selling those like online or whatever. And it was fun, but it wasn't like a serious business. I was still trying to get the farm going at the time. I was like, I'll just supplement my farm money with skull money for a little while, just keep me afloat. <laughs> and it wasn't until I met some of the local hunters and they were like, oh my god, this is what you do, this is so cool, like you have to do this for a living, like you have to like tell people that you do this so that we can bring you our skulls. And I was like, really? People want that? They're like, yeah. And it turned out that skull cleaning was like a far more successful business model for me than farming. So the business is called Dermestidarium because the beetles that I use to clean the skulls are called Dermestid beetles. A Dermestidarium is actually a word that means a place that Dermestid beetles live. The little containers are Dermestidariums technically, so I named the business that. And then uh, a couple years into it, I'm like, well, I guess I'm stuck with this business name that nobody can pronounce or spell, but we'll make it work. <laughs> I'm not a risk taker, like I'm very calculated about what I do and like I didn't even think about going full time here until I had a certain savings. Like I, I had a hard number that I wouldn't go under and even after I think I hit that I waited like three more months just in case because it's so important to me to not be in financial stress. I grew up not poor but like we weren't always financially secure, and that's like one of my missions in life is to just not be financially insecure. And doing that as an entrepreneur can be challenging. You have to give yourself a little room to fail. I think it's easy to just be like, okay, well I have you know, the savings and get through the next three months and I'm just gonna quit my job and see what happens with my business. But if your business doesn't do well in that time that you've given yourself and you're running out of money, like your business isn't going to work. So if you have enough money to have enough time saved up to let your business fail a little bit first, I feel like you're way better off. Or if you can do it while you're still like making money like as a side hustle too. I do get things shipped to me from all over the country. I think I've probably gotten something in from like every state at this point.
And I feel like what I do with the skulls and skeletons and, and even you know, the hides and stuff, I'm not creating something new. Like I'm not an artist that's like starting with a blank canvas. I am really kind of just like the middleman between you know, nature's one part of, you know, kind of like decay and decomposition and the other side of it where it's preserved and clean and looks really beautiful. And then you can like really appreciate the artistry that is nature. So I get to help kind of preserve that for people. And when those skulls go on the wall, that story is immortalized there. but I would never have gotten to this if I hadn't done that and kind of failed so miserably at being a farmer. Um, so kind of one business's failure turned into the launch of the business that would turn out to be my full-time career. There's no nine to five here. There's like nine until whenever the work is done. I think sometimes like that I work for myself, I work from home situation seems really glamorous and then you realize your work-life balance doesn't exist anymore because your work is your life. There have been a lot of challenges. You know, since I work primarily with the hunting community, it can be really seasonal and I'll make, you know, sometimes half or two thirds of my income over the course of like two to three months. And that feels really good during those two to three months, but then a couple months later when things are like slow, it can be a little bit scary. That's why I started a different part of the company, Restwell Pet Memorials, which is a specialty pet aftercare service where I do special memorials for people's pets. Pretty much anything that anybody can imagine for a way they want to honor their pet that's what I'll find a way to do for them. And it's a totally different market. It gives me a little bit more flexibility. So like my off season during like the summer or you know, like shoulder seasons before fall starts, I'll still be getting pet clients in when hunting season's slow. So it kind of helps to be able to like add things to your business as you see necessary and to be able to also take things away if they're not making money for you, you're not stuck with it. Seeing where things are going and able to move with it versus you know getting yourself so stuck in something that you can't adapt. You can be a really good like craftsperson or a really good artist and still fail as a business owner because you didn't ever really accept that like the businessy things were important too. But yeah, I wish I could go back to when I was giving up kind of like my dream business and just be like, don't worry, your dream business is still coming. <laughs> so I don't quite understand why we were